The Dark Side of Investment Agreements The story of how international tribunals force governments to pay our money to corporations. How many times have you heard politicians or economists saying, if a country wants to develop, it just needs three things. Investment, investment, and investment. And who can disagree? We all know how important it is to invest in education or health. But what does it mean when we are talking about big corporations investing in developing countries? Surely that must be good too. Well, that's the theory. Since 1990, flows of foreign investments into developing countries has grown more than 15 times, reaching 570 billion US dollars in 2010. That's a lot of money, but very little of it reaches the poor. Most flow straight back to the industrialized nations. But that's a story for another day. Today, we will explore the secretive agreements that governments sign, hoping to attract all that money and what they are giving away instead. Don't you think it is time we take a look at the small print in these agreements? It doesn't take much reading to realize that behind the gloss, investment treaties have a very dark side. Investment agreements allow corporations to sue governments at secretive international tribunals when governments try to regulate in favor of their own people. Yet, governments cannot sue corporations even if they commit human rights abuses or environmental damage. So, governments are stuck with all the obligations and corporations get all the rights and protection. Hard to believe? In 2010, Uruguay decided to protect public health by including large health warnings on cigarette packages. It was immediately sued by tobacco giant Philip Morris, who argued the measures were unreasonable. And in 2001, when Argentina, in the midst of a major financial crisis, took measures to protect its population by freezing electricity and water rates, it was hit by over 40 lawsuits by big corporations. Argentina had to pay out 912 million US dollars. That's equivalent to the annual average salary of 140,000 teachers or the building of 40 new hospitals. By 2010, there were at least 331 cases filed by transnational companies against states. The current crisis has shown that our economic system has enriched the 1% at the expense of the 99%. The massive gap in wealth has not just been caused by bank bailouts or unjust taxation. International investment law played its part. Investment agreements keep benefiting the 1%. European and North American corporations who filed 91% of the lawsuits, the investment lawyers who charge around 800 US dollars an hour. It's time to put corporations and investment agreements back under public control. Join Transnational Institute's call for an alternative investment model.